having a very special video because right here beside me I have my new Indian friend who is here to basically share his own experience of moving from India um, to Switzerland and studying um, at the best business school of Switzerland and probably the whole Europe and um, I just thought that this will be incredibly interesting and useful for you my Indian subscribers to understand the whole path from the perspective of an Indian person. For your convenience, I will have an interactive timeline that you can click through and you will see the spots right here on the video. And if you're interested in any particular question, you can just go to the description and click to it and watch it right away. So now please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Lakshman from India, specifically Hyderabad. I am an engineer like a lot of Indians, Indian youngsters today. And uh, I did my engineering at Indian Institute of Technology, Banaras University in Ceramic Engineering. And after that I worked for three years and then I'm here. Do you remember, actually, well I do remember how did we meet, but in general, describe <laughs> how did we meet and how did it happen, why are we even friends right now? So, the first reason is that you came to Sengalu, yeah. I came to Sengalu. <laughs> That's true. Right. Uh, and then we met through a friend of mine and now a friend of yours and of us. Yeah, um, our mutual friend. Mutual friend at um, a dinner party. Mm -hmm. Dinner party. Yeah, uh, that was like a week, of, a week back. Yeah. yeah, and that's because we both study here and doing our master's degree. Yeah. And my master's degree is a double degree in SANS, which is like kind of master's in management, global management. And yours? Uh, mine is Strategy and International Management. It's Which is one of the best programs at the uni, actually. It's actually ranked number one by Financial Times across the world. Yeah, which is like, what is that? <laughs> and he's a genius. He has <laughs> 750 on his GMAT, right? Mm, 750? Yeah, 750. So. I, I have no words, <laughs> but that's very cool. I think, yeah, we're talking about GMAT. We, yeah. We'll talk about that. So Lakshman, why did you choose HSG, uh, University of St. and mm -hmm. this particular master's degree? So when I was looking for business schools, um, so at a point I started looking for master's in management program. Mm -hmm. And I first looked at um, HSC Paris, right, uh, which has a really good master's program. And then I looked at the rankings and mm -hmm. I, at that point, did not know about HSG. Okay. And uh, of course, the same program, but then Later on, I looked into the rankings, I looked at the program, I looked at what the program offers. Okay. And I was actually amazed, uh, like the main point that got across to me is the communication. Mm -hmm. That despite being a business school, mm -hmm. their focus is on purpose, vision, introspection, reflection, which I found very refreshing. Yeah. And um, given my dreams and the kind of life I want to lead, this appealed to me a lot and I, like I couldn't find this proposition anywhere else, anywhere else. I like this so much. This is actually, uh, speaks a little bit to the, I think, m marketing side of the, mm -hmm. of the university and their values that they convey, which a lot of people don't really pay attention to in my opinion, but mm -hmm. then it really makes a huge difference when you yeah. think about it, when you think about the community and the whole atmosphere that mm -hmm. you will be living in yeah. for, for a couple of years or even more. Yeah. Okay, so since we're here, what was the process of, like the whole admission process to high yeah. scale for you? They have certain criteria, 100%. 20% is for your GMAT, 20% mm -hmm. weightage is for your grade point average okay. in your bachelor's, and then 30% um, is for a video interview, which makes it like 40 plus 30, 70, and mm -hmm. then 20% is for your work experience mm -hmm. and extracurriculars and then 10% is for an argumentative essay and let's right now go step by step through the admission process so okay. the first one you said was GMAT which okay. is what is that what is this is a test guys <laughs> and this one is much more difficult than IELTS uh, I've also taken GMAT mm -hmm. I'm not disclosing my score <laughs> uh, it's it's worth than 750 but still mm -hmm. yes how was it um, for you so when it comes to GMAT, the first mistake if most people do is getting scared about GMAT. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there is a lot to be scared about, but then if you go in, in a structured process of first understanding the test as mm -hmm. to what it wants to test, 
and then you have a look at the sections and then if you follow a structured process yes. prepare for it yes. and you cannot really do it in like two weeks or four weeks you need to give it the time it needs and when you give it the time it's not that difficult it's exactly the strategy yeah. that I try to teach my students with IELTS. First, understanding exactly. what the test actually tests, exactly. what it looks for uh, in your skill set. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah, yeah, the strategy. Okay, and the next step after after GMAT, I got experiences from the nonprofit space, from the policy side of things, from working in a business startup, all of that, and then it took me three years to get all that experience. And this is, by right. the way, like another integral part of your admission, right? Exactly. Like exactly. showcasing your experience and that yeah. you are a, a natural fit for the program. Exactly. So I was looking into an MBA. I did not really look into Masters in Management. Mm -hmm. I was looking at US schools, uh, Stanford, Harvard. When I spoke to an admissions consultant, mm -hmm. uh, there, we always have a free consultation, by the way. Uh, where? where? Uh, okay. There are a lot of uh, admissions consulting firms. You just need to look online. Uh, so for suppose if you're interested in Europe, look for talk to a consultant who has a lot more focus on European business schools. And if you have focus on the US, talk to consultants who have uh, focus on US. A uh, good place to look would be the forums on Beat the GMAT. Okay, you just yeah. Google for Beat the GMAT, B E A T T H E GMAT, and you'll find the forums. I, I will I will have all the links in the description yeah. to the video, so you can just go there and have a look. So you go. So I went there. I wrote to them. Uh, they wanted to speak with me because they thought I had a good profile. And then when I spoke to the lady, she was like, "You have a cool non-traditional profile, uh, which shows progress. But then um, you need an anchor because I tried to experiment, understand how different sectors are mm -hmm. for the sustainability space. And then it would have taken me two more years for me to get into a top mm -hmm. uh, B school. Uh, and also the second thing is the fees." Uh, it's about, if I talk about Indian money, it's about uh, it, a debt of student debt of about 1 crore rupees, which is huge. Okay. Which is huge. <laughs> uh, and I did not want to have this um, knife on my head once right. I graduate. Right. Uh, I want financial, I wanted financial freedom. So I didn't want to have that option. Mm -hmm. Then I was looking for courses in sustainability, mm -hmm. master's courses. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at HEC Paris. Then I discovered the master's in management program. That, you know, I saw that it was a flagship program. Mm -hmm. Then I looked at the Masters in Management, then I looked at SIM, and then I thought, okay, this is what I yes, need. Yes, this is so the I best applied. of the best. Yeah. So that's why you went for it. Um, so obviously, we are both here because we're able to communicate in English. And yeah. how I know that in, in India, you basically start learning English uh, being a very small kid. Yeah. And is this an official language in India? Um, it's, it's kind not of. Not an official this. language. So I started uh, right from my KG, like kindergarten, mm -hmm. with English. Like even before that, I had this uh, ball with English alphabets and not any other yeah. alphabets. Yeah. So I started with English, say, maybe when I was one year old. One year, yeah. guys. <laughs> okay. Is this a typical thing for Indians? Do all Indians um, start at one? Probably not. Uh, in urban areas, mm -hmm. yes. In our homes, we are encouraged to speak English. Right. A lot of people. Uh, in the rural areas, no. I would say it's not the case. Mm -hmm. So how was it for you? How was it for you? Did you have any private teacher, for instance? Like I had for one year and a half, mm -hmm. I had like a private teacher for English. Or mm -hmm. did you do it all by yourself at a school? So uh, I did it at the school. So I was... Uh, I didn't score like 90 out of 100 or something mm -hmm. until I was in grade nine grade nine or ten mm -hmm. uh, so I, I used to do well I used to like reading stories a lot mm -hmm. so I used to read a lot of my uh, read <laughs> yeah read a lot of my textbooks um, we had something called the non-detail where we had a lot of stories mm -hmm. uh, I did focus on grammar but not a lot okay. uh, uh, so learned vocabulary because I used to read news a lot newspaper I, I was naturally uh, taken to reading newspapers that's amazing yes. Yeah, especially the sports section, but in hindsight, I should have read the, you know, columns like editorial or something yeah. more, which improves your vocabulary a lot more. Uh, but yeah, reading newspapers, going to school, okay. and most of it, most of my English is from school, let's say. So you didn't pay like any, no. any money? No. 
yeah, you guys can see that the demand didn't pay any money to speak to speak English so fluently and get into the top business school of Europe. And uh, okay, coming back to high gear to our school, uh, what are your future perspectives? How do you see yourself using your degree from 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 Switzerland? So. Firstly, are you staying here? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, do, do you want to stay here in Switzerland after you finish your uh, studies? Um, right now I'm very open mm -hmm. in terms of what location I would be working mm -hmm. on after my degree. Uh, the great thing about HSK and the same program is that the, uh, the ranking is really good, the teaching is really good and the companies, the, you know, the job sector, they realize this. Even if you talk about international organizations like, uh, say, World Bank or UN, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. understand that we have people being recruited from exactly. uh, these for, for these organizations. You can take top consultancies, all sorts of industries. So th there is this uh, reputation that is really good. So that gives me a leverage. When, when you ask me, for instance, and when you're thinking about migration abroad, I'm thinking, how do I get the, uh, the permanent residentship, for instance, or like the mm -hmm. business permit? Ask yourself, what kind of value do I bring to the country? Okay. Maybe to the industry that I'm a professional in, maybe to the company, so that you really understand why are you going there, not just to yeah. go there for the sake of going, but rather to, to change the status quo yeah. of the country. You, you have to bring some kind of a unique value. And if you bring that unique value and if you're good at what you do, mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't be very difficult yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Of I, course, I, there are these uh, international regulations, but then you, if you stand out, the companies will mm -hmm. want to do everything to have you. So let's talk a little bit about the regulations, the legal aspect mm -hmm. of you being an Indian. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have right now, do you have what, like a residence permit here or yeah. a visa or how does it work? I have a residence permit B, which is common mm -hmm. for, stu for students outside EU. Mm. Students from outside EU? Um, me too. Russia is, <laughs> okay. not, uh, Russia is not in EU. Okay. Right. So we have a residence permit B and when we talk about uh, work permits, mm -hmm. there are two things. One is internships which are less than 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so for that, I, I recently got to know that in Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg and Netherlands, uh, you're allowed to do internships less than 90 days without any work permit. So it's a great opportunity if you're in a school in Europe and can apply to companies in these countries, right. companies or organizations. Uh, but for work after graduating, for full-time work, we will need a work permit. Okay. And uh, Switzerland is almost impossible, I should say, That's for non-EU and non-German speakers. If you have, uh, especially the German-speaking part of Switzerland, uh, if you speak a local language, say in the European framework, if you have B2, mm -hmm. B2 or yeah, B2 is the upper, bare minimum you need. Upper intermediate. Yeah, upper intermediate is bare minimum you need mm -hmm. uh, for you to be, you know, even considered. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I talk about Germany, it's probably a little simpler than yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, of course, Switzerland, the pay is high, so there's a lot of competition. So. It, and it, it plus, very difficult, yeah. for, for Switzerland, I can add that companies must file a business case to the government where mm -hmm. they describe what value exactly you bring exactly. as an employee. And uh, that they actually have spent, have spent some time looking for another person, for a Swiss person, yes. but they didn't manage to find a Swiss person. So that's why they're taking you like yeah. as a non-Swiss and a non-EU citizen. Yes, that's, that's really difficult here in Switzerland, yeah. but across Europe, uh, in Germany, it's pretty much, it's easier. Easier than Switzerland, yes. So there is definitely an opportunity and a chance to go there. The key tip, if you want to work in Europe, is learn European language. And let's, let's probably wrap it up because I think we've covered a lot of different questions. Um, uh, let's just talk about general advice. Do you have like a general advice for Indians pursuing their dreams abroad, yeah. migrating, mm -hmm. and I don't know, like tips, tips for you? Okay. Uh, tip, for tips, I would say it depends on where you want to go. Like you have to be choosy about where you want to go and why. Like think a lot about uh, if, if you say I want to go to the US, I want to go to Switzerland. Like why Switzerland? Why United States? Like. What is the value you bring to that place so that they can have you there? Then uh, once you have some preferences, 
learn the local language if it's not English uh, because you know it, it can really set you apart. Apart from that, develop skills that you think would be needed in the local market there. So for suppose uh, some places, maybe there's a shortage of a specific kind of engineers. For suppose here in Hayeski, I was told that my background in ceramic engineering or materials it's something you would probably not find in anybody else in high school. Yeah. So it, it really sets me apart in terms yeah. of, you know, the skills I have. So find something for yourself that really sets you apart and mm -hmm. makes you uh, attractive to employers. And uh, yeah. money-wise, mm -hmm. uh, about like scholarships and stuff, do you have any kind of scholarship? Have you had any kind of scholarship? And how do you manage your financial uh, side of traveling? Uh, I applied to a scholarship which is offered by the Star International Foundation. Okay. So it is a merit scholarship that is reserved for some master's program mm -hmm. and for people who have not done their bachelor's here, mm -hmm. who have a bachelor's from a foreign university, mm -hmm. right? And uh, depends on uh, what program you are here in as to how the application process is. For my course, which is SIM, uh, so what they did is they just considered uh, on the basis of my application and I just had to express my interest that I, uh, I want to apply for this scholarship and then uh, so the scholarship for every program is 15,000 uh, Swiss francs. Can you turn it to rupees? Okay, Swiss franc is about 75 rupees okay. right now. Mm -hmm. So if it's uh, 15,000 then it's like 15 lakhs uh, into 3, 5. 45 almost like uh, 10 lakhs mm -hmm. uh, 10 lakhs 10, 10, I have no 10, idea what is something. Yeah. a lakh okay uh, lakh um, okay <laughs> but people people, people are yeah. just okay yeah. so that much but if considering the fees here which is uh, per semester I pay 3300 something francs 3320 mm -hmm. francs uh, the course runs for like four semesters which is um, 12,000 mm -hmm. francs mm -hmm. Uh, actually, it would be around 10,000 francs because in the last semester, if I do just my thesis, I have to pay only 70 francs as a fees. Really? I'm not taking any courses, yes. That's, that's cool. Yeah, of course, there are living costs and other costs. So, and they're very expensive here in Switzerland? Yes, they're very expensive, but you have to, when you're calculating the cost of the program, mm -hmm. you have to consider the fact that if you go to some other program, even in India, mm -hmm. in a management school, in a good management school, You'll probably end up spending more than what you totally spend here. Really? Yes. Uh, if it's a top business school, right? Not because in of... Russia. I mean, <laughs> here I spend way more than I than I usually yeah. spend in Russia. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that's interesting to know. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank Lakshman. Thank you so much for, for having me. Thank you. No problem. I am so happy actually uh, to have you today here and to bring some value to our to my subscribers. Yeah. They, they are right um, now. If they have any questions, maybe they could write to you uh, so that you could relay them to me. I could no problem. You if you or... guys have questions, please do text me and mention that you want to ask some questions to Lakshman and then I will just... Um, yeah, cool. Right. Or maybe people could even write to me on my LinkedIn if you If have, you're okay uh, with that, yeah, yeah, no sure. problem. I will have the link of Lakshman uh, in the description. So please yeah. go check it out and do not hesitate to contact him with questions. Yeah, uh, feel free you. to write to me. Thank you very much. It was a delight to have you Thank and you. to have you as well today. And I will see you very soon in the next videos. Thank Ciao. you. Bye. High five. <laughs>